Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. Today I'm going to be harvesting the rest of my root veggies in this bed here. I've got carrots and beets. They might not quite be ready still. I harvested the ones right up here. I had some grown right here and I had secession planted. Uh, I did this about, I harvested this about a week and a half to two weeks ago. Uh, these were secession planted maybe a week and a half to two weeks behind that. Uh, possibly up to two and a half weeks. So these might not be full size. However, I really need to get out some squash. I've got some summer and winter squash that I'm gonna put in this bed like I've got right there. I've got a Queensland blue winter squash here. And right there, I've got a black beauty summer squash. It's a zucchini. Let's get to harvesting and see how these go. All right, so I got my drip irrigation going right now. That's why you've got some wet spots because they just, they need water right now. Not this necessarily, but I mean, I got all the beds going with drip irrigation. So this, I believe, this is the Danvers, okay? So that's this row right here. We'll see how they look. Oh yeah, they look great, look at that. Now these get much larger, okay? Uh, the Danvers get quite big, but these look all really good. If I would have waited another week, I probably would have gotten some even more size to them, but this is good enough for me. Okay, some of these are a little small. That's still not bad though for one row, guys. I mean, it doesn't take up a lot of space. And look at, look at all the carrots. And these are so much sweeter, so much better than you get in the grocery store. All right, let's see, what do we got? Next one, right here, what is this? Purple haze, this one's the purple haze. Let's see how these came out. All right, well, so they're not as dark purple as I thought. They're more like a reddish. That's okay. Oh, there we go. There's some dark purple. That's what they're supposed to look like now. These also have stayed quite small. They're not of the size that I really want for picking, but I got to make room, guys. I got to make room, so. Plus, we're coming into summer. I mean, it's, it's getting hot. Today's going to be 84 degrees. Yesterday was like 90. Um, it's just a little warm for carrots and they'll start getting bitter if they sit too long in the heat. There's some good looking ones. So these ones, the purple haze, they've got a purple exterior and then the inside is orange. These tall ones here, wait, what is this one? This is not the tall ones. What are these? I don't remember. So in the pr video where I planted these, I'll be able to see, but the sun took out the permanent marker it ruined the permanent marker so I don't know what these ones are let's see hmm those are probably the tender sweets I would guess and these little guys I'm not gonna mess with but all that will be good Ooh, baby carrots <laughs> We'll wash them really good and the kids will eat them just like that. So some of these real small ones, eh, if I wash them well, it'll be all right. There we go. Check this out guys. So I filled up this bucket already. I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna cut the tops off with a pair of scissors. So with carrots, you do not want to leave the tops on for very long. If you do, they go bad quickly in the fridge. So the sooner you get these off, the longer they last in your fridge. So you just cut them off like so. I'm just gonna put them on the ground for now. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do with them in a minute. And I'll take these and I'll put them off to the side. So I'm gonna feed the greens to the chickens. So where I'm cutting, I'm leaving a little bit of the green like so. You don't want to see any red in there, but you also want to take it down as far as you can. I find that's about the good spot. All right, there we go, guys. So that's not a bad harvest for three rows. I'm still got, I've still got more to harvest. This is all the greens. These are going to go to the chickens right now. A lot of vegetation for the chickens. They'll eat all this up. We'll turn it back into eggs and fertilizer for me. They love it, guys. I mean, clucking with joy, super happy. They love it. And it's good for them, really good for them. A lot of vitamins and stuff for them. So now, we need to find a sunny spot 
that is dry. And right now it's pretty early in the morning, so there's a little bit of shade coming from that tree right there. But in about 20 minutes, this is all gonna be sunny. So we're just gonna lay this out, okay, in a dry spot, flat like so. And we want the sun to cure the skin and that'll harden up the skin a little bit and allow you to keep them a little longer in the fridge. All right, so these are the Atomic Reds is a variety of, of this one. And so they're a bright red carrot and they get tall greens. I mean, they're the tallest ones, but, oh wow, they got pretty big. Now, I wouldn't say that's super red. It's supposed to get really red. You know what, I might have to cut off the greens as I go with these, because they're not gonna fit in my bucket. So we'll cut it off, leave ourselves a little room like so. Check that out. Oh, it's split, unfortunately. So let's see, what does this one look like? These two, there we go. There's a small one and a big one. That's a nice size though, boy. So it's weird, it's got this big head on it and it just didn't fill out down here. So I don't know what that's about. This is a big harvest from just one row. I mean, they got big, so, and they grew quick. So, I mean, the other ones, probably would get about this size and fill up a bucket each row. If I would have let them go a little longer, it seems like these grow quicker. So those laid out as well. Now we're gonna harvest some beets. These are the bright red beets. These need more time, but I really need to open up this bed and get some other veggies in here. So this is the Detroit variety, I believe. Detroit red or Detroit blood or something like that. And then this variety is like Chig, I, I don't know how to pronounce it guys. It's like Chigagia, something like that. But this one has like red and white rings. They're really pretty. But you can see the, the leaves of this. They've got the really red stems versus this. It's, it's green with like pink down there. So yeah, not bad, not bad. Those are all the beets. We got a lot of greens, which you can eat the greens. And the greens are good. They're great in stir fry. So this isn't a whole loss. The fact that I didn't get the roots big. They're really good as greens. And we like making something called sag paneer. The main ingredient is gonna be spinach, which we don't have any more spinach. It's too late in the season for us. The spinach started bolting. We took it out. And then it uses some other green. A lot of times turnip greens, but I like it with this. It makes it a little sweeter. It's a really sweet green and we like making that. It's an Indian dish, it's really good. So we're gonna do the same thing here as the carrots. We're just gonna cut the tops off, okay? And then we're gonna give the cups, tops to the chickens or if you're gonna eat the tops, you can eat them. But leave a little bit like that, not a lot. You just want a, a small amount at the top so you're not cutting into the, the beet. Stick these in the sun as well. Let those cure. These are the Persian. Okay, so they're the little ball carrots. As you can see, they're just little balls. They're really cute little carrots and they have a wonderful sweet flavor. These are some of the sweetest carrots that we grow. They don't get real big, but they're fun. And you can grow a ton in one row. I mean, I've got them real close together and it doesn't hinder their growth at all. Not bad for one row. I mean, and, and you can put these rows really close together with these carrots. I mean, they, they just grow so well confined. In this bed, this is all Parisian carrots and I put them in between because they, they don't get tall. Um, I put them in between all the onions that I'm growing and, and they stay small so they're not gonna impact the other veggies, but then I can put a whole lot in and maximize the space. So they're great for growing in between other things uh, when you just need, you don't have a lot of space so you want to get something in there. Uh, when it's winter, of course, these don't grow well in the summer because they're a more cool weather crop. I'm going to set a timer for 45 minutes. There we go, 45 minutes. Now we got a timer going and I'll make sure I bring them inside. I'm going to brush them off, brush the dirt off, of course. Now that I pulled out all the carrots, kind of 
break this dirt up a little bit. I'm gonna re-amend it. Now we're gonna break up the soil here. First, I'm gonna remove these drip irrigation lines so I can get in here. And then I'm just gonna go through and break up the soil. Now I grew a bunch of root veggies in here, so the soil is already very loose. Those root veggies do a good job at creating air pockets and whatnot. But I still wanna kind of even this out, break it up. I mean, technically this is tilling in a way, but I'm not getting deep. I'm not, I'm not overworking it. And now just these big chunks, if there is any, I'll just break them up by hand, try to even this out as best as possible. All right guys, now it's time to plant. I'll go through the varieties I'm planting. This is a Crenshaw melon. Now, take a look at how leggy this is. So I planted this the same time I planted that. Actually, all these were at the same time. I just didn't have the space to put it. And in my grow lights, it's just not enough light, so they got a little leggy. But that's okay, we can revive this back. Uh, once it gets in the ground, they should take off and do well. But I wanted to get this melon in, so I'll put that right in the center. I mean, the melon vine does get big as well, but they, but they tend to go a little slower than the winter squash, so. And I can get this to vine out this direction, and this one to vine out kind of that direction a little bit. And then this one we can get in the center. So I think we've got the room. I'm gonna dig the holes first and then we're gonna mend with a little bit of fertilizer. Bone meal, super important. Helps root development. That's really good for in the beginning. So there we go. I've got maybe a half a handful, maybe a full handful. You want quite a bit of that stuff. We're gonna do a little bit of blood meal to give it a, a kickstart in, in some vining growth. You don't want a lot because that can hinder its fruit development later on. And then I've got this, this is a 624 fertilizer. And I've got about a handful, I'm gonna split between the two, so maybe a little less than a half a handful each. There we go, let's get these in the ground. Bury this pretty deep, not above the first set of leaves, mind you, but we wanna bury part of that stem since it is leggy. That all encourage some roots to form at that stem area and it'll give us a little better, um, a little better plant in the long run. So th that is the Crenshaw melon. All right, so this is a pumpkin. It's a golden delicious Hubbard winter squash, basically. Winter squash and pumpkins, same thing. Not much difference. There we go, whoa. Tons of root development. We're gonna have it hanging off like that. Get as deep as we can. And it, melons actually, all, all these here, they're all related. They're all in the same category of plants. There's different subspecies of these, but they're all related. This one is a sunburst, summer squash. I've got another one growing behind me in another bed. This is the winter squash, this table king bush acorn. So being a summer squash, you know, they, they grow a little more bushy. They're not as viney. This one might get a little viney, but we, we're gonna have it grow up a stake like, like that. Most winter squashes though go, I mean, they'll, they'll vine out real far and they're just too big to, they would be too big to sit next to some of these this close. You need some space, 36 inches or so. However, this one is a bush variety. You can see bush acorn, table king bush acorn. This thing grows like a zucchini, so it'll grow um, you can grow it upright. I mean, it will vine through a little bit, but more like a zucchini. So just like that, and we'll just train it up a stake. So simple enough, and we can get that in pretty close. This is called a Tiot Bat Put. It's a summer squash. It was kind of interesting looking, so I wanted to grow it. Um, we'll see how it does. When you grow vertically, by the way, like this, you can actually, instead of having it sprawl across, you can actually get a couple more plants in um, than you normally would be able to. Let's uh, replace the drip irrigation. Drip irrigation set up again. Let's get the stakes. So we do not need the stakes at the moment, technically, because we're not gonna tie them up, except for that one. But if you put them in later, you risk damaging the plant's uh, roots, so. We don't want that. So there we go, they're all in. Last but not least though, we need to now, get these out of here. Now we need to water and fertilize, so. So I'm gonna do that with two fertilizers. 
fish plant food from Alaska. Okay, this stuff is great. It's got natural bacteria and, and fungi and everything in there that help break down the other fertilizer quicker. And then this is really important. Um, Mora Bloom, it's a 0 10, 10 The 10 and the 10 are both really good for uh, newborn seedlings. Um, it, the phosphorus helps with root development. The potassium helps with overall vigor of the plant. So we're gonna get a fair amount of this. And you gotta realize these are very heavy feeders. These squash, they grow so quick and they require a lot of feeding. So a little less of this fish fertilizer. We don't need as much. We will go ahead and fill this up. We're gonna give a very heavy dose to each one of these plants. Try to miss as many of the leaves as possible. We don't wanna burn those leaves in the sun. And somewhere I read that that doesn't happen. I don't know what to believe sometimes, but there's a chance. I don't wanna take it. This does two things. Gives it uh, nutrients right away because the other fertilizer is not readily available. It's not bioactive for them. It needs to be broken down by the soil biome first. So it gives them that nutrients right away to kickstart. The other thing it does is we're watering it, which it needs right when it's planted. But the most important thing for me, I think, is the fact that it adds a lot of this soil biome to the soil. I mean, molds and bacteria and stuff, and that'll help break down the other fertilizer a lot quicker. All right, so we almost completely use this up. I'll go ahead and give these other two that are in here a quick little shot. And we'll get that nasturgeon as well. Now this stuff stinks, by the way. All, all these fertilizer I just use smell terrible. It's very important that we mulch this because that's gonna keep that moisture in. All right, so this is a hardwood bark mulch. I'll turn this upside down, boom. You can see right there. This is what they have at my store. A local big box shop but i'm using a hardwood bark mulch because it just works really well it keeps that moisture in really well and there's less of a chance of this having a problem with persistent herbicide like some hay and straw can do we're gonna use this whole bag for this bed we gotta raise this up we don't want the drip irrigation system underneath the mulch Everything is planted. I've got this nasturgeum here. It's gonna help kind of keep these safe because a lot of the bugs that plague these plants will actually go after the nasturgeum before they go after these. So it'll really help. Hopefully that's the idea at least. Now, if you wanted in the meantime, you could get like maybe bunching onions in the center. You could put, you know, something that's a quick crop before these get too big. Uh, maybe something high enough, not too high, so it won't block the the squash back here, the winter, the summer squash, but you could get something right in the center. It would be a quick crock, maybe lettuce even. I'm not sure what grows with this. I'd have to look it up and I might actually add something pretty soon here. You wouldn't want something like tomatoes. Those take forever and they get tall and they would block the light. But in this instance, the light's coming from this direction. This here, these stay short. They don't grow real tall. And they get some height to them, but I'm growing the zucchini upright, right? So um, these will stay Hi, but like I said, I might put something in between. I got to research what I want to put. This allows them to grow out. And so you're just utilizing the bed for its roots really. And then all this space for them to grow. I think we're okay getting three in the front here. I still got a watermelon that I got to figure out where to put. I've got like one or two other uh, winter squashes and I've got a couple cucumbers. So not sure where I'm going to put those. I might have to restart some seeds because I think they're getting too big. Maybe toss those and then put maybe back here. So I could put some, you know, cucumber back here or something. Once I pull out this garlic here, which is about a month away. So it's been 45 minutes. The skin is now a lot harder. We can then just brush them off with our hands. Don't brush too hard. You still can damage the skin. And then we can get these in the crisper section in our fridge and they will last for a while. These are a little different. These require a paper towel around them. With the carrots, you want to put them in a plastic bag. All right, well, thanks for watching, everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.